to the Pharisees, the holier than the holiest, to judges and sentences of the transgressors. You may want to see this one out because I wouldn't want to break another commandment and add it to the long list of the scapping accusations you will pass on me. Probably you could get a heart attack from this and God forbid it could result in us having to bid you goodbye as you glory on into his arms and I wouldn't want to be the one that didn't walk in love enough to one a brother or a sister of what could lead their hypocritical censorious hearts into an early grave. Thank you. For as long as I can recall, recalling I had many obsessions, my greatest fixation being the queerest of them all. All I know is with weeping and mourning and gnashing of teeth too close to wearing of sackcloth, I wanted him to release the miraculous like he done in the days of old and unleash the impossible once again and turn me into a boy who'd grow to be a strapping man, who'd be a better man than the sons back to Pharaoh and Jezebel, wickedness crossing the wall, dressed in manliness, their arms and muscles and strength that I was so envious of. I wanted me a woman for me, a woman that would feel safe with me. And maybe if I were a boy like this and deserving boys around me, maybe then society wouldn't have frowned upon it so much when I wifed one or all of them, if only to save them from these monsters full of deception, lacking around, just waiting to devolve them. But you see, these were thoughts they couldn't spin into words because I was surrounded by hallelujahs and amens and talks of Hafa and Primstone that made me shrink back into the tomb I had lived in for so long. This, this was the forbidden and in as much as I was as stupid as Eve, I wasn't as brave as she to make the first move and grab the fruit, let alone take a bite. Maybe, maybe I was a teens to be brave because I did take a bite. Once or twice, it looked too enticing, too tempting. My resistance snapped into two and strings of self-condemnation and guilt and shame called around my neck, squeezing the life out of me. Don't get me wrong. No, no, I wasn't scared of dying. I had been ever since this lingering, wandering hands that gained an unholy access to the privatest parts of me. A little finger over there, a little penis in here, a little tongue over there cropping, rummaging, scrumbling like my body had his release and in some sad twisted way it did because when his groans and sighs of pleasure mixed with my silent screams I knew, I knew I wanted to be him, I knew I wanted to have every single thing that made him male and I loved that I did. I didn't have a name for it, all I knew is it was painful, I didn't like it. It left me feeling so dirty I couldn't even voice it out to the next person because I knew, somehow I knew I wasn't a temple he was supposed to be worshipping at. You see, somehow, through more of him than me, I've come to realize that it was never my womanhood at fault. It took me time to realize that he that was specialized in mistakes and making me a woman definitely wasn't one of them. It took me time to realize that if I wanted to live a life full of fulfillment and purpose like he planned way before I was even in my mother's womb, way before they even had a thought of conceiving me, if I wanted to work in that plan, then it would take me having to submit myself to his plan and his ways of doing things even though sometimes I didn't like it. it took me time to understand that the fact that I was choosing faith over feelings didn't mean that this desires lacking in the inside of me would just fade in a day or two or even years. It took me time to understand that in as much as I was precious by virtue of being one with Christ, holiness was a journey that I had to be willing to walk with him, daily submitting myself to him, daily dying to the flesh. And even on those days when it looked like my flesh had won the war over me, he would love me the same way he had loved me when he said that even while I was still a sinner, he died for me. I knew. I knew with sheer conviction that he was in love with me, I still do, because when he called in the sweetest soothing melody, it wasn't a thundering, this is the holy ground and thou shalt strip off your dirty garments before stepping into it, neither was it the hoarse voice of a country preacher sweating in an oversized shiny suit, terrorizing me with talks of repent or go to hell, no, it was gentle. It was sweet, it was confident, it was full of need, full of love, full of wanting, begging me, pleading with me, in fact, to let him love on me. 
And somehow, somehow this perfect love stripped me off my fear in him unlike if I was naked, stripped bare and unashamed. Overtaking all of me until all that was left of me was simply Jesus, standing tall, shining bright, lighting not only my life, but of those around me. So dear Pharisees, if you dare listen to this to the end and you still like to pass judgment, go ahead. Just at this time, I won't be taking the stand because my judgment was put on him and in him forever no condemnation shall near me.